okay. Let's start with the items that we can also get and do from our cell phones. Thus like on our phone's quick menu, we can also customize our Windows 11 quick settings. Just click on the volume, Wi-Fi and sound group in our taskbar, then click on the pencil icon to edit. From here, you can now add more available applications or functions to your quick settings. Let's try mobile hotspot for example. There you go. The setting tile is added now. To remove it, you just need to click the unpin icon on the tile. You can also reposition each tile by dragging and dropping them to the position of your choice. When you are all set, just click done to apply all your changes. Alright. In cell phones, you can check your battery usage and what application consumes it more. We also have that in Windows 11 now. Just open your settings. You can search for the settings and open it. But the easiest way to open the settings is by pressing Win key along with I key from your keyboard. From the settings, go to the system left side menu, then to the power and battery. From here you will the battery usage. Click on it to expand. There you go. You'll have the details here of your battery usage. You can select the details between the last day or the last week. When you scroll down, just like in your cell phone, you will also have the details on which application consumes the battery the most. As you can see here, Google Chrome is a really power-hungry application. Below the list, you can also see the applications running in the background, like Netflix, which I have never opened yet, but it still consumes power. You can also search for a specific application here, if you want. Widgets, a common thing on cell phones, is now also a common thing in Windows. To enable it, just right-click on the taskbar, then open the taskbar settings. Under the taskbar items, you will see a toggle for widgets. When off, the widgets will not appear in the taskbar of course. So, this should be enabled to access them. From the widgets window, you can add more widgets, but they are limited to this list for now. Let's try to add, to do, and gaming. There you go, we now have the two widgets added. To remove them, just click the ellipsis from the widget, then select remove. You can also resize and reposition and customize the widget contents through the ellipsis menu. Now let's move to the virtual desktop. Let me just open a few random applications here to explain virtual desktop better. To access the virtual desktop, just press Win and Tab keys from your keyboard. Below, you can add new desktops. As you can see here, I already have two. Here I can switch to my second desktop. You're still on the same single PC, but you have more desktops. This is useful for keeping unrelated ongoing projects organized. For example, a desktop for personal things, and another one for school or office work. As you can see here, when I press Alt-Tab, I have only Word and PowerPoint open in my desktop too. While on my desktop one I have my video editing stuffs. It's a great way to keep two projects or tasks separated and organized. You can of course, delete any desktop that you created by just clicking the X on the thumbnail. This will then move the open application from that deleted desktop to the remaining active desktop. Alright. Next is voice typing, which is a voice recognition application that automatically types what you are saying. But before opening it, make sure to check your language settings first, since not all languages are supported. As you can see here, I have set my default language to English United States, since my previous default language of English Philippines does not support text-to-speech and speech recognition, which are required for the voice typing to work. You can also search for voice typing to get more information, and also to change any of its settings. As indicated here, to activate it, you need to press Win and H keys from your keyboard. Let's press Win H now. Ok, my cursor should be on a text box before activating the voice typing, so that it can type what you are saying. Let's open a blank notepad here, then press Win H again. Then speak. Hello, testing. This is a test on the voice typing of Windows. To do a next line, just say next line. Next line, next line, next line. Or new line. And to delete just highlight the word and say delete that. Next line, next line, next line, new line, new line. Okay, so this is a sample of the voice typing. It's really good. Okay, as you can see, I have a lot of applications pinned in my taskbar. You can do that by opening an application, then right-click on its taskbar icon, then select Pin to Taskbar. Once pinned to the taskbar, you can easily launch the first nine icons on your taskbar by just pressing the Win key, along with a number from 1 to 9. Win with number 1 key launches the first icon from the left, in my case the File Explorer. 
Win and number 2 launches the second icon which is the Windows Media Player. Win 3 is for Edge Browser, and so on. You can easily launch the first 9 application, since this only works on a single number combination with a Win key. So, based on my taskbar icons, I can only do the quick launch up to my Filmora application. What many of us miss from Windows 10 is the context menu when you right-click a file or a folder which contains many options on what you can do with the file or folder. In Windows 11, when we right-click on a file, we only get this short list of menu options. But, Windows 11 has recently added this, Show More Options menu. Clicking on it will show the good old complete list of context menu. If you don't want to go through that two-level menu, you can simply select a file, then press Shift and F10 keys, which will also bring up the expanded context menu. The Start menu is another controversial item when upgrading to Windows 11, but personally, I like it. It's a lot simpler and you can also customize it by going to the Settings. Then go to Personalization. Then Start. From here you can toggle the items that you want to see in the Start menu, like the recently added or opened, or most used apps. You can also add folders within this area of the Start menu. You can go to the folders. From here you can toggle what you want to appear on the bottom part of the Start menu. Let's toggle the first three items here. Here we go. We now have the Documents, File Explorer and Settings folders readily available. There is a lot of other useful folders here that you can toggle. By putting these folders here, you can trim your icons from the Start menu and use the space for other important applications that you use. Speaking of quick access to common folders and tools of Windows, you can also access the Windows component menu by right-clicking the Start button. From here you can easily access the common control panel settings and tools like Power Options, Event Viewer, Device Manager, Disk Management, Computer Management, Terminals, Task Manager, Run and more. As an alternative to right-clicking the Start menu, you can use your keyboard and press Ctrl X keys, which will bring up the same Windows component menu. This next item is a solution for one annoying thing that Microsoft has done. Let me just open the Edge browser here and open several random tabs on it. We have three tabs here in Edge browser now, as you can see. Then when I press Alt tab, you will see that each tab from Edge are also considered as one application that you can switch to, which is so annoying. When I use Alt tab, I want to switch to a different app, not a tab. If I want to switch a tab, I can press Ctrl tab for that. I'm not sure what Microsoft is thinking. It seems they don't want people to leave Edge. Fortunately, Microsoft placed a setting to disable this very annoying thing. Let's press WinI to open the settings. Go to System. Then open Multitasking. Then change the Alt tab option. Look at this. They even put three options just for Edge Browser and place the only sensible option at the bottom. Promote Edge Browser much. Just select Open Windows only here. Now everything is back to the way it should be. When I do an Alt tab, I will only see one Edge Browser here. Thanks God. Now I can Alt tab in peace. Now let me show you how you can easily arrange your windows within your screen. First we need to go to the settings. Press Win I. Then go to systems. Then multitasking. And make sure that you have the snap windows enabled. When that is enabled, when you hover your mouse over the restore, maximize or minimize icon of a windows title bar, these options will appear. You can choose a layout and what position the current window you'd like to be. Let's choose a three window layout here, with the current window being on the left side. It will then let you choose other window for the other two positions. Let's choose Edge Browser for that. Then PowerPoint for this bottom right side. There you go. Let's try the four window layout this time. Just choose a window for each position. There you go. Do note though that when you change the size of any window here, it will revert back to its previous size and position. Now, you might notice that I have a dark mode everywhere. You can see it in my notepad application. Even my file explorer are all in dark mode. That can easily be achieved by going to the settings. Then choose personalization from the side menu. Then go to color. From here, set the choose your mode drop down to be dark. Choosing light will make the whole windows theme be on a lighter color. While choosing custom will let you choose a different mode between your default windows mode and the other applications. Personally, I prefer the dark mode for the whole windows since I have an AMOLED screen and dark mode literally saves battery life for me. Also, dark mode is a lot easier for our eyes. Alright. Now for the last tip. The position of your start button. By default, the start button in Windows 11 is centered. I have too many pinned icons here, so the button looks like on the side. But this is still centered. And we can change that by going to the settings, then personalization. Then click on taskbar. Below you will see taskbar behaviors, which you can expand. 
Then choose the position you want on the taskbar alignment drop-down values between left or center. Left of course, is reminiscent of the previous Windows versions, which everyone is familiar with. But the centered start button has grown on me, so I choose that. Alright. That's it for this video. I hope these tips and tricks has helped you be more at home on using Windows 11. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Noba Air.